is insane. Like this, can't believe this. Let's hop out of the car because he thought we were going to roll it. Right? Does just put a call <laughs> the radio for help. Lost a moment of concentration and he's gone down over the edge of the bank. Have you ever heard of Gunshot Creek car? They're basically that to do. I can't believe this track we've stumbled across out here. We're just in the process of packing up now. It's about 10 in the morning. Fairly windy up here during the night and today, but still a beautiful spot up on this mountain. We loved it up here. The drone I've been using for this trip for the footage is a new drone as well that I borrowed off G-Works, the guys who did my canopy because they have one but they weren't using it over these holidays which is a fair bit better than the one I had. I had the DJI Mavic Air and now I'm using the DJI Mavic Pro 2 which is a quite an upgrade so the drone footage should be a fair bit better. And then after this trip the DJI Mavic Pro 3 should be out or nearly out so I think I'm going to upgrade to that which will be about two and a half, three thousand dollars $3,000. Now just quickly on the map for this trip this is where we came in out through Maitland and Singleton. We spent the first night out in that Goldburn River National Park and then from there we made our way down to Kapiti. That's where we were around that Mount Airly and that and then yesterday we made that drive along this upper Turon and we're over at Safala over here now. Then today we're going to head over to Hill End and down through all this area and up into Ophir. We may camp down along here tonight or up here. We've got some river crossings to do in there. So it's going to depend how much that water's still up and whether it's dropped much overnight and dropping today. Finish packing up and hit the road. Came back through the town of Safala and on our way out to Hill End now. We just pulled up at Wallaby Rocks Crossing, I think it's called, and there's a meant to be a track that connects, but I'm not sure which one it is. Well, we found this one here. That I've walked that and it's probably halfway between my knee and the waist. There's a bit of depth there, but I can walk it all good. There's a bit of flowing there. It's sort of, I think it'll be all, <laughs> I think it'll be all good. Uh, apparently someone drove through yesterday, Arvo, and the river was up more then, so I can't imagine why we wouldn't be all good. If I give it a crack, I guess, and see what happens. Oh, here we go. A little bit nervous about this one. What do you reckon, Kai? Ah, uh, seatbelt's off, I guess. Put that rear locker in. So, is this, is there a bridge here or not? No. Yeah, put that rear locker in, second gear, so a little bit of momentum. See what happens, I guess. the heart racing a little bit. That was all good, but you're in and out too quick. Was your car starting to move a bit then? I, I would have thought it wasn't totally straight on. I think there's a bit of rear, rear downward there. Yeah, it looks like you were starting to go with it a bit. That's yeah. why I was saying move it a bit because I, I don't know, I sort of hit it so you're in and out before it can take you yeah. rather than just sitting there. Yeah, yeah, it did feel like there's a bit of rear sway there. Yeah. Oh, well, a bit of fun. A bit of fun over there. Yeah. Another, there's the sun. Another crossing here to contend with. Probably similar depth out there in the middle, but not moving as fast. Definitely makes it exciting out here when all these rivers are up. What would normally be very simple shallow river crossings turn into a definite 
obstacles to negotiate and get you thinking and get your heart rate up. off a bit as we come out this side it's a bit rocky here how's it feel to own a submarine i'm the heavier car um what am i probably 2.8 ton even two coming up 2.9 even um dad's probably down around 2.4 maybe so i got an extra 500 four 500 kilos on him which um only makes it better for these crossings because my car is it's got much more weight holding it down before it floats. But it's yeah, the problem is when, well, what about when you're stuck in mud? When it's a water road? Yeah, well, oh that, then it's not good. <laughs> but this rocky stuff is good. Oh, we're both three. It was a heap of fun that crossing. No, it wasn't too bad in the end. Now, I don't know where this track goes, but we're out exploring, adventuring, and we'll see what we find out here, you know. May end up camping out here, or a few more crossings, or challenges, or who knows what. We'll see. We'll find out. I can't believe this track we've stumbled across out here for an awesome day. This one's moving quite fast and this is definitely, um, well, it should be all good, I could still walk it, but it was moving my feet just a touch, but it's only short. Just power maybe a little bit through that, and then you're sort of uh, out. But yeah, definitely had to walk that one first, but you build your confidence a bit the more you do, but just don't get overconfident. You have to be prepared, prepared for, obviously for the one you can't drive. Windows down. Yeah, this one's, Got some water moving, it's only short, in and out. Probably the most difficult, if not very close to. on that one. Sure. Did you feel your car move at all? A bit of, bit of control loss in the front there. Because your car is probably four or five hundred kilos lighter than mine as well. But you kind of come with it and it's pushing you down to the exit anyway. Oh yeah, we're still going on this track. I hope when it comes out the other end, but we don't know. But we'll take, keep taking what comes. Having a lot of fun out here on these river crossings and sort of navigating your way through the in between them all. This is, uh, we're just like literally driving down the river now. The track comes way out further down. Oh, are we gonna, oh, is that gonna be water in the car? It's a bit nerve wracking heading out into the river here, just in a little bit of depth. It's kind of out there, but yeah, you gotta. I know, I was looking at it, you know, I should have tried thinking, oh, you can't do that, you can't just send it out there and not know what's out there, you gotta go for a walk first. What a track with crossings. This would be, might be a once in a lifetime experience, only really they're out here after a heap of rain. here for a late lunch under this cliff 
How cool is that massive red cliff there? This is a popular area for people to come looking for gold. When we were sort of back in town early, there was people there looking for down in the river, sort of doing some gold, I don't know, whatever you call it, gold digging, moving rocks, trying to find it, whatever you call it. I haven't seen anyone on this track today. I'd say just the rivers being up have turned a lot of people off and it doesn't seem like it gets a massive amount of use. I think it's a bit of use. What a spot to pull up and have some lunch. Finish up lunch and straight back into it with a deep crossing. This one's about a car length deep and then it's shallow after that, but you've got to plunge in a bit here. So windows up. Windows and down and. Yeah, we're down. In we go. Motorboat and through and then out the other side. Oh, wow, it's here. so shallow. Yeah, we're shallow here once we're through that bit. spot now and the car's way back up there and it leads into the river but I have no idea where it comes out so I'm just walking down trying to find an exit point at the moment I don't know this is like how long is that that's a couple 250 meters or something down to that camera like this is ridiculous hmm. so you'll just come with me behind me will you and just down the end there it dips in a bit down to nearly waist deep um, and follow me because down in the end there, there's a log in the middle I'm gonna to go to the left of. And I'm gonna go second gear low and just hold a little bit of momentum because it's just, uh, you have water coming in your car otherwise and just try and create a little bit of a bow wave. Okay. This is ridiculous. This is the longest crossing I've ever done in my life. It's not up to the, it can't get in the car yet. No, I can't get in the car yet. We're going with it, which is good because it's not kind of sort of forcing up in the engine bay because it's a long time to put water up into the engine bay. Even obviously we got fully snilled sealed snorkels but then then down the end here like it becomes way steep we're just off down the river here this is <laughs> this is insane i just can't believe this so i'm going about 10 k's an hour second gear low range hold a steady throttle keep that bow wave going keep the water up out of the car and everything and then there's a log down here somewhere i've got to be careful not to hit but oh, there it is in front of me now i'm also getting deeper here there's that log there I'm going left round to the left of now. Well it's coming up over my bonnet. Have you bought it? Oh. like a tsunami. <laughs> oh wow. What a crossing. That is ridiculous. Unbelievable. All the way through that track was a track and day and drive and everything that was. There's the main road just there. I can see the signs. There's just a bit of a hill climb up out of here. Dad's car sounds horrendous. I think it's just water on the belts. Um, it should go away, but it's making a fair squealing. Definitely that sort of, it's not too muddy, but, but just that water with that bit, bit of discoloration, I'm sure isn't brilliant for uh, engine components like alternators and that. Fair uh, day and track. Yeah. That was a great morning out. That was worth a million bucks, that one. Yeah. It was great. That's definitely like the, probably the most hectic water track we've done. By a long shot. For depth yeah. and length of crossings and moving of water and everything else. We picked the perth perfect day for it as well. Like yesterday would have been probably too much and then in a couple of days it wouldn't be as exciting. We actually got a nice little climb up out of here to the main road. A couple of holes here. Should be a little bit of fun.
Here we go down to the bridle track. Never driven this before, we'll give it a crack. So it's closed at Monaghan's Bluff, but we're turning off before then, I'm fairly certain. I think we are, <laughs> otherwise they're coming back. far down the bridle track at all and we decided to try to sort of spot this little side track up a little mountain and the peak's just there but we've just come back down where there's a nice fire pit set up and a bit of flat ground here to camp on just leveled out the rooftop tent and yeah it's coming up five o'clock we've had a big day of four-wheel drive and there's no need to sort of keep going and once we get down the bottom we're down on the river down the bottom but I'd say there'd be a fair few people camped down here whereas up here we Got the place to ourselves up in a nice mountain camp again and that wind's not like it was yesterday. Hope we get a good sunset from up here. And there's plenty of firewood around up here too. I'm glad we're in this country. It feels like the high country during this cool. It's dishing up the food of the high country. And um oh yeah, I might have a couple of those plums if you got something. Yeah, I've got heaps of them. That was such an awesome day on the tracks so today, just can't stop thinking about it. Sort of the perfect day for wheel driving. So I've been thinking about this canopy as well while we've been going because after this trip, you know, I keep imagining it in my head as we're going, but after this trip we're going to reset it up. Getting this fire going now, I feel that temperature starting to drop a little bit, it's kind of like another High country, high country camp up here in the mountains again, so beautiful. What was funny, and I haven't even told Dad this yet, was only, you always get ridiculous comments on YouTube all the time. It was probably only three days ago someone had to go at Dad's car because he had a snorkel on it before he had lockers and they were saying, why the hell would you get a snorkel? You're not going to be going through water that deep when you don't have lockers, blah, blah. I had a big carry on. Then I was only thinking today when we drove that track, you wouldn't drive that track without a snorkel today, would you? No, it's definitely not. <laughs> yeah, there was someone on the other side, he said he's not going because he doesn't have a snorkel. And the thing is, like, you don't have to get water up over your bonnet for it to be a problem. Once it's slapping up the front end there, like, it's heading up towards your air filter and everything else. We pulled up my bonnet and there was water all over the cover, over the head cover. Yeah, that's there's right. There's below the battery. Yeah, there was water up through the whole thing. Like yeah. if you didn't have a snorkel, you would have had water in your airbox today and you didn't need lockers to drive that track. I always put snorkels high on the list of things at the start of modifications. Obviously you got plus it helps with dust and um, air intake as well, but yeah, like you get a big mud puddle, you hit at speed and it forces a heap of water up in the engine bay or even river crossings and that. Like you don't have to be right up over your bonnet for it to become a problem. You go through something decent, have a look at the engine bay after and it'll be full of water. Yeah, yeah, that sorted that out. Yeah, someone only said that three days ago on a video about your car. Yeah, why get a snorkel before lockers? Yeah. Well, there you are. Yeah, that's why. I've come this far. <laughs> well, you and would sit, have been... Sitting here to see them with an engine in it that's running. Yeah, you would have had a C's engine today without a snorkel. <laughs> I'm going to steal Dad's table out of his drawers because Kai's building the car he got for Christmas on ours. Show us all your new lights, Kai. Lightman! 
such a spectacular afternoon up here. That wind's just fully gone and that sunset was just absolutely beautiful. Settle in here for a peaceful night. Got some new torches this trip as well to use around camp from Nebo. I still got that magnetic one which I showed you last trip which I absolutely love. The magnetic one which you can stick on anything. We've got this little clip on one now so you can sort of clip it on, on the clipped on the side of my wheel arch the other night actually and it worked really well. And then we got this monster head torch here as well which maybe I'll show once it gets dark. Actually it's not a head torch. I have a head torch on my head but this is a flashlight and they're also USB rechargeable while you can charge other USB devices off them. And so then when Kai gets lost in the dark we can light him up. There's so much light in that big, uh, that big handheld one. That drone, no. Can't believe this track and what we've stumbled across out here. Can't believe this track and what we've stumbled across sort of out here for the day. What a awesome time. This is um, just the, and the popular area for gold. No. Let's find gold, let's find gold. This is a popular area. This, such a spectacular afternoon up here and that sun just serve to me, serve to me, serve to me, whoa, whoa, whoa. And when you do turn on that notification.